How's it guys? Maiden here from Simple Church PTA, or as I like to call it, Simple Church Pata. <laughs> anyway, today we're talking about prayer. And we all know that awkward situation in a youth group where the leader asks that dreaded question. So guys, he's going to close and pray for us. And we all look to each other and we pray ironically. Please Lord, don't let it be me. <laughs> Why? Why do we do this? As followers of Jesus, prayer should be enjoyable. We should love talking to God. But for most of us, we're just uncertain. We don't know how to pray or what to pray for. And you know what helps me every time I feel like this? Just to guide me? God's Word. And today we're going to turn to God's Word and ask Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. And we're going to look at John 17. Now, this is one of Jesus' famous prayers <clears throat> where he prays for his disciples just moments before he was uh, arrested and crucified. And from John 17, we are going to discover today 10 prayers every follower of Jesus should pray. Let's begin. Prayer number one. God, may your name be glorified in who we are and in what we do. Now, this is from verse 1 and 2, where Jesus says, God, glorify your Son so that he can give glory back to you. Here, Jesus reveals to us the foundation, one of the foundations of prayer and the gospel and the story of the Bible for that matter. And that is that it is not about us. It's about God's glory. Prayer number two. Lord Jesus, thank you that we may know God as a loving Father and have eternal life in you alone. Now this is from verse three where Jesus gives us a definition of eternal life. Where he says, it is to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. And here Jesus reveals the second foundation or reason for prayer that it is about a relationship with the living God because eternal life is not just one day in heaven but it is to live now in a relationship with God the Father Lord Jesus through the power of the Spirit. Prayer number three Lord Jesus please fill me with your joy. Now this is from verse 13, where Jesus tells God, the Father, I told them many things while I was with them in this world, so they would be filled with my joy. We need to remember that the absence of suffering is not the definition of joy, but a definition of joy is to live in relationship with Christ and to be fulfilled in that relationship. And yes, suffering is part of life, but joy is is also part of life in Christ. Prayer number four. Father, please protect us from evil and help us and give us strength to fight against it. That's from verse 15 where Jesus says, I'm asking you not to take them out of this world, but to keep them from the evil one. This reminds us of the our Father's prayer in Matthew 6, I think, where Jesus says in that prayer, deliver us from evil. So at this moment, Jesus is busy building his kingdom throughout this world. But remember, this is a fallen world. And it's only going to be 100% perfect when Jesus comes again and settles his kingdom on earth. And that is why we can ask God. And we can know, firstly, that he's with us. And we can ask him for his protection. <clears throat> prayer number five. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will teach us the truth of the Bible and help us to obey it. That's from verse 17 where Jesus says, Make them holy by your truth and teach them your word, which is truth. God's word is truth and we need to allow God to make us holy through that truth. So in uncertain times, we need to hold on to the certainty, which is God's word. Pray number six. You guys are doing great. Just hang in there. Father, Thank you for our calling and purpose in Christ and show us who you are sending us to. That's from verse 18 where it reads, Just as you sent me into this world, I am sending them into the world. 
Now this prayer is to remind us that we are sent by God to share the gospel. Prayer number seven, God, we ask that you will strengthen our fellow believers and also reveal yourself to those who don't know you yet. That's from verse 20, where Jesus says, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for those who will ever believe in me through their message. So we need to pray for our fellow believers and for those others who are still going to come to faith in Christ. So just think about this for a moment. Jesus prayed for you and me roughly 2,000 years ago. Awesome. Prayer number eight. Lord, we thank you for the intimacy we can have with you through Christ. And we pray for unity in the church so that the world will know that Jesus is Lord. Verse, that's from verse 21, where Jesus prays, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. Unity is a big prayer for Jesus. He prays this, and it's a big part of John 17. That's what I wanted to say. And this also reminds us of his words earlier in the gospel that he tells his disciples that by your love for one another, the world will know that you are my disciples. Prayer number nine. Father, help me to always be aware of your presence and open my eyes to see your glory in every situation I may face in this world. And that's from verse 24, where Jesus prays, Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you love me even before the world began. So here's an interesting prayer from Jesus. He prays that we should be where he is. Now in John 1 verse 18, we read that Jesus is near the Father's heart. So firstly, he wants us to be near the Father's heart, to live in intimacy with God. Secondly, we read in the gospel that Jesus is um, with sinners, outcasts, broken people, poor people. And he also calls us, therefore, to be also with these people, to love them and serve them and share the gospel with them. Final prayer, number 10. Father, we pray that your love will be visible in our lives so that we might may bring glory to your name. That's from verse 25 and 6 where Jesus prays, O righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I know you, and these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. For God's love to be in us, he firstly has to be revealed to us in Christ. So we need to get to know God through Christ, through his word, through the Holy Spirit. Live in that intimacy and then he says his love will be in us. So never do we read in the Bible that Jesus says our lives will be perfect as his disciples. But he does ask God the Father's perfect love to be in us. So I hope this was helpful to you. Ten simple prayers you can pray from John 17 as a follower of Jesus. And I want to bless you with these words. May God our Father bless you with his love. May our Lord Jesus Christ bless you with his joy. And may the Holy Spirit bless you with his truth. Amen.